What do you mean a night to sleep over? Is there a timetable? Is that how Istanbul works? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I won't speak for him. Yeah. I won't speak for him. But there are different nights where he spends okay. in different in houses. different homes. Yeah. Okay. So if he's not coming to us to sleep at our home, he just comes to see us. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. When I was asking you about e <laughs> so w w a thing we do on the show is that we ask people what do they like do they need transport yeah well just to treat you well because you know we are humans and i asked you about makeup and you're like no <laughs> 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 you're very adamant to die boy <laughs> makeup for what <laughs> no i need bad better makeup so ever ever in your like, life i do i do when shooting like tv like, makeup but yeah. not hectic hectic makeup yeah. Uh, a specific reason? Um, I don't like it. You just don't like it? Yeah, right? I don't like makeup. You, I don't you, like it. Is it something deeper than that? Or you just like makeup for what? It's like... I, I don't think it's something deeper than that. But like, why Why am I in fine makeup? Yeah. You know? Because yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm fine with my... And also I have senses of skin. Okay. So okay. I feel like if I'm fine makeup, I'm going to be fine because already my skin is sensitive. So yeah, yeah. I'm very vigilant on what I put onto my skin. But And your skin is beautiful anyway. So, But uh, I'm sure it took a while to get to that point, maybe. Like it was, as you're saying, it's sensitive. So yeah. Or you'd have breakouts and, and everything. Yeah. But it may happen, you are going to be a guitar and a lot. Yeah. Welcome to Engineer Your Life. Finally. Good in exam. Been a while. It's it has. It has been a while. Thank you for honoring the invite. Um, obviously, we know you from Utandonis Tembu. Um, what's the other show where you guys are just the kids alone? Isngani's is Tembu. Isngani's is Tembu. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, I asked this one of my guests, Keith Mamba Oguti, how does it feel growing up on camera? Like, you are literally growing up in front of us and people are watching. Surely that's not the normal way of living. Yeah. Um... You, I think you just get used to it. Okay. You know, you get used to it. Like at the beginning, you, it's like, it's hectic. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yeah. Especially at like a young age. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people know you and you have to speak to a lot of people. You yeah. have to behave a certain way towards people. Mm -hmm. And there's like a set standard that this is how you're supposed to react yeah. to people and whatnot. So it's hectic, but you get used to it. So... I'm also growing into getting used to it. So sure. I could say right now, I'm comfortable. Okay. Like, I'm fully okay. comfortable. But before, like, maybe four years ago, I wasn't at all. But it, it's only fair. You were still, like, in your mid mid teens, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, it, being a teenager and going to school and everybody knows you from <laughs> TV, that's insane. Just, just take me through the process. I mean, what's a typical day from a person who's nationwide famous but you still have to be in school uniform? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll speak mostly on like maybe the first week yeah. when things just started to happen and reality was hitting. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Is this the first this... week you're on TV? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're like, this is actually happening. Yeah. Like at school, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. Cause now everyone's talking about it and those who are not really that close to you to actually speak to you. Yeah. They're just looking at you and they're <laughs> pointing at you and it's like, I will. Yeah. And I will. Yeah. <laughs> So it, it gets overwhelming. It's actually, yeah. it was hectic. It was hectic. Like going into school and everyone just knows you all of a sudden. It's like an instant switch because you went from not being known that much to 
being known by the almost most everyone. Kid. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. like a huge switch. Take me on day one. So this is you saying you're known on first day after the first is this after the first episode of Utan on his temple drops? Yeah. Um that was about five, six years ago, somewhere there. Six. Six years six, ago. Yeah. So first episode of Utan on his temple drops. Um, it's this huge thing on social media, it's this huge thing on TV, and now it's Monday. You have to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I could say I, I wasn't nervous yeah. to go to school, but when I got to school, it was like a huge switch of things. Yeah. Instantaneous. So, yeah. So it was like, whoa, wait, <laughs> wait. Because even like after school, when you go out and the parents are fetching kids. Not even the parents, parents. <laughs> <laughs> even the parents can see you. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not used to speaking to like older people. Like, relax, wait a minute. <laughs> so it's like it was it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Um how long did it take for it to register that this is my new life? I think I'd say two, three years. Yeah. Two, imagine. three years. Two, three years for me to actually... And what are you dealing with in this process of it not registering yet? Because there is insecurity there. There's being scared of how do I act now? There's being um, insecure about why do people want to be my friends? Is it because they want to be close to the TV character or they want to be close to me? You are born with I think I think my biggest problem was how do I act okay. towards other people? Yeah. I'm more of a reserved people, a person. reserved person, yeah. and I don't talk a lot to people. Yeah, well, so it was like, Ish, now even all the people are speaking to me. Like, what do I say? Yeah. Mm. What do I say to you? Like, it's really hard making a conversation with Dumu Dum Dan. Yeah, well, like having a solid conversation with Dumu Dum Even when you're normal. Yeah, even yeah. as a normal person. So yeah. now it's like, Ish, I gotta be mindful of what I say, what I do. So I think that was my biggest problem. I wasn't. It wasn't insecurities and all those things. I just think it was a way of how do I act. Would you say fame is painful? <sighs> I wouldn't say fame is painful, but it is. It's not painful. It's just hard to maneuver around okay. it. It's you. not painful. It's hard to maneuver around yeah, it because yeah. you get used to it. So it can't be painful at all because you get used to it. And so it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt you in any way unless it's like negative stuff that are going around. But besides that, you just find your way to maneuver around it and live with it. What's the most painful thing somebody has said about you online? Yeah. Um, I don't think I get that much okay. of... Yeah, I don't think I get that much. I think it's always uh, that one loser. <laughs> That's what it's like one loser. It's a loser. <laughs> and just have data and talks gack from their mouth. Um, it was a painful thing. I can't pinpoint yeah. uh, at time because like, I don't really engage that much into reading. It might not have been directed to you, mm. but they have opinions about other people you love, which is your family, because it's your whole family that's on screen. I'm sure there are certain things you went, you came across and you're like, Oh, that's not, that's really hurtful. Maybe it was about your brother or about, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll comment more on the things they say about my mom instead of sure. me. Cause yeah, yeah. I don't think that, I have a lot. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that I have a lot that they say about me because yeah. I'm more reserved, I must yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Has it ever gotten to a point where they say something about your mom and you're like, Yo, I have to call mom? That's like, that's insane. No, I, I don't. Like, I, I, I don't pay close attention to what other people say because okay. I, I know that's the biggest mistake you can you ever can make, make yeah. if you are in a public eye. Okay. The biggest mistake you can make is pay attention to what people are saying because it messes with you. It messes with your mind, everything. So I don't pay that much attention. Like, I see and I'm like, damn. And I'm like, okay. I hear you. Let's, I hear let's you. move Let me on. Keep yeah, let's. Let me watch the next TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> next, I don't yeah. want to see it. Like, I don't want to dwell and into it. In it. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to dwell too much into it because once I start doing that, it starts to. I start to let people control me, control what I think, yeah. what I do. So I, I don't want that. Yeah. But you're only human, so I'm glad you're saying that once you start doing it, it it it, it triggers those bad parts of your thinking. Yeah. Which means. 
every now and then the human side of you got, does slip into the wormhole of reading these things and you're like huh? actually no let me get out of this place yeah it's not a good place to be reading um your mom you speak fondly of her and i i actually um reading up on you there's a picture i saw i think you were winning an award you were in maroon school uniform your mom and your dad were hugging you with so much embrace you seem to be very close with your parents how do you navigate being close with both your parents even though there's so many of you and there's such a big family uh i think my relationship with my parents i just i just like to like I'd say I demand my attention. Okay. <laughs> like, I know there's a lot of us, but you're not going to start neglecting me now yeah, because there's yeah, a lot of us. Yeah. You brought me here and yeah. I'm here because you did. I hear so you. So you're going to give so me... So give me my yeah, attention. <laughs> you're yeah. going to give me the attention that I need. Yeah. So, yeah, it's my name, but you have to find a way to actually divide the, the attention to accommodate all of us. All of us. So yeah. there's no way that I'm going to feel left out because it's banning. You got to find a way to make it work. It's actually a learning for people who grow up in East Temple, which is a polygamous um, um, setup like your family is. Um, how do you demand attention as a child? Because most of us who don't grow up as Tembini, like many mm. people who are watching, because East Temple is such an anomaly for people for some reason, is that we're so used to mom and dad just loving me and I get all the attention. Maybe if there's three of us in the family, we get, you know, some attention. For you, there's like almost 20, <laughs> you know. So how do you then demand attention? Maybe take a person who has, who's growing up in his table and they're struggling right now. Or what's he, hey, there's nothing wrong you're doing, but there are ways to demand attention. Okay, so if there's one thing I do is that I communicate. Okay, so... I think also with communication, you need to tell people, but okay, now, right now, I'm feeling neglected by you. You're not, oh, yeah, you're not talking yeah, to me. Yeah. So I think food now, gonna, okay, I think I'm the only one who has a WhatsApp group with my parents. I created my own group and so it, I can speak to you guys. Three of you. It's just the three of us. Just the three of us. It's just yeah. my dad, my mom, mom, and, and I. Yeah, That's yeah. all. Because. I'm going to speak to you, whether you like it or not. Yeah. You're going to give and me a... And you must reply. Yes. <laughs> you're gonna, if you don't reply, I'm calling you. Because what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. So I, I have... I created a group just for us so I can speak to you. So, you know, and also I feel like it's not something that I had to really invest into doing. Because if I'm being honest, my dad has his own ways of distributing his time. Yes, He's yes. very good at it. Yes, yes. So yes. I wouldn't say... I have felt neglected. No, okay, okay. they good at this sure, time, sure. especially my dad, because he makes sure that when when I'm back at home, mm -hmm. he makes sure that he sees us every day. Every day he yeah. comes, he comes. Even when it's not his night to sleep over, he comes to see us. So I wouldn't say... That 30 minutes, he yeah, makes sure. He yeah. makes sure that he sees us. So yeah. I wouldn't say it's been like a huge thing that I have to do, but there are certain steps that I also take to make sure that... We are still in communication. Yeah. Wait, let me get a more personal. You just said something. What do you mean a night to sleep over? Is there a timetable? Is that how his table <laughs> works? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I won't speak for him. Yeah. I won't speak for him. But there are different nights where he spends okay. in different in houses. different homes. Yeah. Okay. So if he's not coming to us to sleep at our home, he just comes to see us. What's the importance of a present father? Because your father, as I said, is present to like, I'd, I'd use a round off number to 20 children. What's the importance of a present father? Because for me, you come across as very w reserved, you well grounded, you know what you stand for, you believe in yourself. Um, is, it, is, the, is having a present father the reason you think you are so grounded? Um... I do think mm -hmm. having a present father is the reason I'm grounded because I think having a father in your life is important because they teach you a lot of things mm -hmm. that other people can't teach you. Sure. And there are certain things that happen when you don't have a father because I've seen um, people have many reasons where they say um, they don't have a dad, so they go around looking for father figures Ooh. from other people. Yeah. So I feel like that's Even also in romantic relationships. In romantic relationships, yeah. especially in romantic relationships. So I think having a father figure is a vital part of your life. You'd like really need it. 
do, do you say though that you've seen people who don't have father figures become successful um and you just wish for them that if they had a father it, it could have been an easier journey um when it comes to success it doesn't i don't think it depends on whether you have parents you okay. have a father or a mother yeah. i feel like it depends entirely on you and your determination and how much you are willing to work for something yeah because there are people who are orphans but they yeah. are very yeah. successful yeah. there yeah. are people who don't have father figures very successful so i don't think success entirely depends on that even though um having parents and having a dad is is something that might um cause your journey to be easier yeah but it doesn't entirely depend on that i do believe that having a father and parents makes your journey easier cuz you don't have to start paying bills at a young age they do that for you yeah yeah but yeah. also sometimes you do have access to parents but they don't pay so i don't think success entirely depends on that it weighs you come across to me that as much as you are part of this big family you've got a very independent life you spend a lot of time alone am i correct you yeah do. yeah <laughs> um was that intentional because of just you think your character is to be alone or sometimes because the family is so big it, 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 it there's a lot of conflict so you'd rather spend time alone i think it's just my character okay i think it's my character because even when there's no conflict yeah. i am alone yeah. I, i just i just enjoy my own space yeah. so i feel like it's also growing up with a lot of people so it becomes too much sometimes yeah, yeah, so you just yeah, want to yeah. have a long time you know so i don't think it's about what was your best conflict okay. yeah i don't yeah. think it's about the conflict it's yeah. just who i am like yeah, i enjoy yeah, having yeah. some alone time i know you spoke about demanding attention from your parents um we're using the word demand loosely of course because they're, they're there for <laughs> they're you. there yeah um but how do you deal with sibling rivalry and please be honest with me because you're going to say no we all get along you don't no family <laughs> we, we we actually do like we actually do there's no sibling rivalry i'm telling you Come and on. even if we have an argument yeah it's resolved yeah it's not like something we dwell on like now we're not going to talk for months because I hear you. we argued over one so thing every no. single person gets along with each other yeah i think so wow <laughs> well well when in my in my oh, eyes okay. yeah, yeah from eyes, my perspective, perspective yeah. everyone gets along like we, we don't fight like That's even crazy. if we do we get over it yeah. like build a bridge man we family <laughs> <laughs> we family build a bridge walk over it about how though because there are people who haven't spoken to their sisters for 13 years for 5 years I don't know how do you build this bridge like practical example I feel like of an argument you had and what method you guys used to build a bridge to get over it I feel like I don't know yeah I actually don't know how to explain it to you cuz I can't justify why some people spend 5 years without talking to each other it's yeah. i i don't know how you could possibly do that cuz with life you never know sure like you never know it could life. be your last and day yeah exactly so i think that's one thing we strive on or we stand on that it could be my last day and it could be their last day yeah. so yeah. do yeah. you really want to spend the last few hours with them knowing that you fought and you never even tried to resolve it maybe you don't realize that with your parents not just your mom and your dad your mom i mean your dad and all your other moms that maybe at the center of the family unit even in their marriages that forgiveness is key so you guys have been raised with forgiveness in mind that at any point forgiveness comes first yeah. don't prolong anger don't prolong animosity grudges uh, maybe it's a family thing that you guys have been taught you just didn't realize it now probably <laughs> that it's a family probably. thing that you guys have been taught so what the there's there's absolutely no reason you must be angry at your sibling especially for five years what what do you mean <laughs> what, what you could mean? they possibly yeah. add to you yeah. that do you want to spend five years not talking to them yeah. that's yeah. insane
I think it's insane. Possibly the importance of forgiveness then in your life and other aspects of your life. Do you think you implement it? Maybe in your own romantic relationships, in your own friendships. Do you think you're a very forgiving person? I think I am. Yeah? I think I'm a very forgiving person. Like, I like I like to look at life in other people's perspectives. Sure. Too, not just my own. So when you do me wrong, I'd like to hear what you have to say about it and look at things in your perspective. Because sometimes... Things are not always about me, and there's a reason behind every action. Yeah, and and maybe when I hear why you did something, then I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah. and then I start understanding, with, yeah, oh, you did yeah, this because yeah, of yeah. this, and I understand, with, okay, it's fine, and I can walk over that, yeah, you know? So yeah. I think forgiving is very vital in life. Abu, the fame doesn't move you, why? It really what doesn't. What do you mean? <laughs> like, it doesn't move you. A lot of people in your position... Um, would have walked in here, become a diva, demanded things, <laughs> become unreasonable. Trust me, I've I won't mention names. I'm na- I'm ninety something episodes in, and I've had divas in that very chair who didn't treat me and my team exceptionally well or with kindness. Why do you think you're not a diva? I think um, it's the way that I have been brought up. Yeah, like I I give my parents the the credit. The credit. Yes. Uh, my dad has taught me to be respectful to everyone. Despite the age, um, the race, the, the position whatever. Position in life. Position how much in money life. they have, how much money they don't have. Yes. Yeah. So uh, he's taught us that people, to treat people equally. So the okay. same way that I'd love to be treated is the same way I should treat other people too. So I can't come in here and be a diva and demand things to you. Whereas if you had to come in to my space and be a diva and demand things, I wouldn't like it. So I'd like to do things to people that I'd like to have done to me. If you could unfame yourself, would you choose to be unfamous? Um, <laughs> a tricky question because yeah. I think it has pros and cons. Yeah. And... <sighs> mm. Four years ago, me would have chosen to unveil myself. Okay. But right now, I feel like it's You fine. see the pros. Yeah. And you would work with the pros to build yourself a better life. Yeah. So I get you. right now, I'm at a point where I'm like, it's fine. I'm used to it. Yeah, so there's yeah. no need for me to want to unveil myself right now. Going into In Ghanaian's Tembo, um, which is the show where it's just you guys, the siblings, on, only, did, were you like, oh my gosh, not another show about our lives? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm being honest, yes. <laughs> Ooh, I was like, no, not again. Like, not again. Can we, no, can we not? <laughs> but like, as time, like, like I say, you adjust into things. So... I just thought, you know what, look at the brighter side of, I don't know what the brighter side was, but I was like, you know what, it's fine. We can have another one if they want one. I'm going to go into something sensitive and you can say, no, we're not doing that. Um, And we will move on because this place is, uh, on Engineer Your Life, we heal through conversations, right? We want to hear your story. And there is a, a good two minutes that somebody will take and apply to their own lives. Um, you come from a very black Zulu traditional family, humility, very guarded, traditionalist, um, but you don't present as very feminine. How did you handle that with your parents? Because our parents are smart people. Mm. They can see us and how we present. And have you ever had that conversation with your parents? I have. You did Yeah. But I feel like... Um my conversation or my way of sending it through to them Mm -hmm. was done by other people. Really? Or I had a chance to even. Really? Yeah. That's unfair. (laughs) Very unfair. It's very unfair. It's painful, actually. (laughs) I feel like it was was done by other people before I I even got a chance to actually speak. How did they do it? So, um... I don't know what season was it, but it turned on his temple where, okay. where I was going to do Umsonyan. Yes, yes. Uh, 
that's that, sweet that, that's when yeah yeah, yeah. Know what I'm is. that's when i started like showing on tv a little more mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i knew it was coming mm-hmm. and it came so people were the one who were telling my parents who were asking my parents who were sure. so they were having the conversation for me and it was done for me cuz what happened was my mom was like is it true mm-hmm. and then i was like well, it's like I didn't mentally prepare. <laughs> yeah, my like, father is not at ease with this conversation. Okay, yet. and now my mom is just like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so I was just like, well, yeah, mm-hmm. and that was just it. That I think that was like a way of me just telling them, okay, yeah, because now people have already done it for me. Yeah, I haven't even yeah, gotten a yeah. chance to say, to actually plan. Okay, this is how I want to say this, and this is how I want to express myself about it. So it was done for me. And my job was to just say yes. Was it a feeling of relief or did you feel exposed that moment when your mom asked you when you didn't prepare to talk to her about it? I feel like it was both. You know? Because at first I was like, damn, ish. Like, I'm not ready yet yeah. to speak about it. But yeah. then after I had said yeah, I was like, oh, well, cat's out the bag. <laughs> <laughs> now what? <laughs> Yeah. Open. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, yeah. So I was relieved after it, but like it was also. I also feel like it was something that I should have been given the opportunity to actually express. Especially because you were too so young. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I was just sixteen. Like, yeah. come on, guys. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. 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 Like, allow me to be an adult so I can sit my parents down. Yeah. Um, in a respectable manner. Yeah. 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 And have you ever spoken about it with your mom again? No. She just loves you and accepts you and life went on. Yeah. Yeah. Which is beautiful, by the way. You, it's not everything that needs to be discussed. It really isn't everything that needs to be discussed. As you say, you have a WhatsApp group with your mom and your dad. <laughs> you talk to them. They're present. They're there for you, which means they love you. Yes. Which means they accept you fully. I, I want you to leave at least getting that out of this, that you're loved fully by your parents and you continue being supported by them. They're taking you to school. They're allowing you to be yourself, to form into the beautiful person that you are because they love you fully and you're fully accepted. And even online, I can see you becoming more expressive of who you are. It's because there's a self-acceptance era yeah. that you've entered. <laughs> you know, that is just absolutely beautiful. And we're having this conversation because you're there mentally, emotionally, you know. Um, yeah, let, 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 let's, let's, let's move on because I can, I'm taking you somewhere. <laughs> um, how do you, how do you navigate growing up with, 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 I, I, I want to put this in a respectable manner. There is that where people, uh, talked for you about who you are. And then there's the four years later, Abongwe, who has reached this self-acceptance point. How are you navigating now after this self-acceptance and boldness? How are you navigating who you are right now? Especially now that you live alone in the big bad Joburg. Big bad Joburg. <laughs> How am I navigating it? Yeah. I don't think I understand the question. How are you navigating being who you are now that you are alone and you are not restricted to being under the shelter of the, the famous family? I think I still abide by the rules yeah. that I've always been taught. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, even though I'm alone in Joburg, I'm here to learn. I'm here to get a degree. Get I'm not here <laughs> to. I'm not here to live life the way I want. It's or, 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 <laughs> I'm not here to play games. Yeah. So I feel like I still. Even though I'm not directly under the hands of my parents, mm-hmm. I still live under the hands sure. of them. The covering. Yes. Yeah. So I, I think I still took the rules and everything as I had been taught. Is it so yeah. 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 And moved on with them. Yeah. Because yeah. they're going to take me further in life. And once I start disobeying those rules, I feel like there's going to be a switch in yeah. my life and yeah. things won't same as being humble and respecting other people. Sure. So if I start taking that and disrespecting that, the thing that I have been taught, I feel like my life will start taking another turn and things won't go well for me. When's the last time you cried and what were you crying about? The last time. <laughs> <laughs> 
Last time I cried. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Last time I cried. I don't know. You do know exactly. <laughs> and then they don't talk about it. I don't enjoy I don't know. You don't know. Do you cry? Um, I do cry. Ne? I do cry. And, and does crying make you feel like you just release the burden? Yes. Ne? I think crying helps. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it like, helps. Like, ah, yeah. It's just for crying. No, I, I do <laughs> cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, like straight after crying, you feel like, you know, it's just I'm fine. Now. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you just, move. yeah, you just yeah. super strong. You're like, ah, yeah. Pinung morning. <laughs> <laughs> you're moving on with your life. Yeah. And thank you for confirming that it was about a relationship. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Are you sure? Hmm. Hmm. I was like, go to West Foods. No. Hi, Bo. Hi, Bo. Hi, my dog. <laughs> yeah, Joburg ish. Eh, the dating pool. <laughs> Very messy. <laughs> Who do you pray to? Who do I pray to? Mm. I pray to you, God. Yeah. And what do you, and what what is the most consistent prayer that you pray to God? Uh protection. Protection. Yeah. I think I pray for protection over my family. Yeah. And me here yeah, the most and guidance and gratitude. Gratitude, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are the three things I never leave out. Do you as you're growing older, do you see the importance of a personal relationship with God versus a relationship that you're taught by Undain, like the corporate prayers? Yes, ne? I do. I do. Uh, I feel like you need to have your own relationship with God mm -hmm. instead of the one that you have been taught by your parents or whoever. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's your journey, mm -hmm. not your parents. Yeah. It's, it's just you and God. Yeah. It's yeah. not your parents... And whoever else's journey, it's yours. Did you ever feel, were you ever at a point where in your spiritual journey with God, where you felt not good enough to be talking to God? Hmm. I know I have. Absolutely. Where I felt like certain things I've done or how I am, especially because both you and I are Zulu. We grow up in a traditional sense where we're still very at the bottom of our self-acceptance. We feel like God doesn't want this. This is wrong. I'm a sinner. I'm this. Instead of understanding that I am created by God like this, this is who I am. And who I am is exactly how God wanted me to be. So, so I say I have yes to your question. Yeah. 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 Because of those reasons you ne? just dated. Yeah. Ne. Yeah. I, I, I fully relate. Because you... There is God, the relationship, and there is God that is presented by people that they think you should fit into. But when you get older, it's so freeing because God, the relationships, is so free. God, the God of grace that we pray to, is so comforting and protecting and loving. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> ne? Yeah, yeah. How are you... I want to go back to the fame thing. How do you think, uh, what are your plans for the fame? Because there are a lot of people, it's like, oh, oh, we're famous. Let's get drunk and party and be off stars. <laughs> what are your plans for the numbers? Because numbers means influence. My plans for yeah. fame. Um, I don't think it's something that I've actually thought and dwelled on. Because mm -hmm. I feel like right now, I just have to get, the small things in my life straight. Okay. So, such as getting my degrees. Yeah. I'm not focusing more on the fame. Sure. Instead, I'm focusing on getting my life together. together. Yeah. 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 Instead of the fame. So, yeah, I think I focus more on getting my life together. And the fame is something that I put at the back of my head. So, it doesn't actually consume mess me. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah. consume me. Because yeah. there's a lot of things. I'm still young. There's a lot of things that I need to accomplish in my life. Sure. On your own. So, yes, on yeah. my own. Yeah. So that's why also I have to have my own things instead of depending on the fame. Because sometimes fame doesn't work for you. Ish. 
<laughs> it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work for me. And sometimes it destroys you. See, so yeah. if you let it consume you, then it might destroy you. So how do you how do you how do you navigate um not getting involved in your father's marriages? Hey. Hey. How do I navigate that? I just don't. Because they are they are kids who will have problems with that father's wife because of this like who's fucking dabin. You get what I mean? I get that. Yeah. So I don't need to navigate anything yeah. around that. Because I know Uguti in the Bazawanda Batara I'm getting so so ma no one got figure man she bang and bazo kunu ba mina suku bang ya ham and shona le because I'm in doubt. Yeah. Even if I do hear it, it's none of my exactly. business. Whoa, like, okay, sky. <laughs> <laughs> none of my business. I'm in yeah. doubt because I feel like why am I even getting myself involved? Sure. It's none of my business. Mm. I'm young. It's not something I should even be listening to or. Letting consume me. Yeah. It's not my own problem, son. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Who are you closest to with your siblings? My siblings. I'm closest to Luan. Really? My brother. Yeah. Twins. You guys are twins. You can see it. We're not. (laughs) There's a twins thing going on there. You look alike. Um, You seem like you relate on many levels. Ne? You both seem reserved. Hmm. Luan just seems reserved. Yes. Very quiet. (laughs) Uh, I think that's where you guys relate. Uh, do you hang out a lot and speak a lot? We do hang out a lot. We grew up under the same roof. Yeah. So, yeah, we Naturally. do. Like, yeah, so from the same mother, same roof, same everything. Yeah. So, of course, we hang out a lot. Is he one person you can talk to about anything? Um. Yeah, I think he is. Ne? Yeah. And just you like, think with him too, he he can tell you anything and he knows what that He's got class. I'm so fit for life. <laughs> it's gonna be protected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he can tell me anything. He does tell me anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is good because, as you're saying, in in how big the family is, there still needs to be that certain close knit thing that you have where you feel protected because because there's so many of you, you can feel a bit swallowed mm. in the big deep ocean. Um that comes with you guys being so super famous. Do you, uh, do you realize how famous you are? Or you've re- actively removed yourself from it? Do I realize how famous I am? As a family. Yeah, I, I, I can see. I can see it. Like, it, it, Especially it, when, it, I, when it, I came to Joburg, I was it, like, it's okay. It's quite a <laughs> weird thing, right? Like, okay. Because like at home, I think people know us. Ne? They know us. But it's not that hectic. Yeah. You know, but then when I came to Joburg, I was like, First day whoa, of <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> even in Joburg? <laughs> I was like, I'm a, na, na, na. Yeah. yeah, well, so now I know how famous or how big the family actually yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. And now you came to Joburg last year? Um, last year. Last year. So that was your first year. Yeah. Now you're going into second year, which means there'll be new first years on campus. It's going to start all over again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> As it like all over again, it's like people are like, oh. Yeah. yeah and, uh, and you see looks, you can, you can see people looking at you. At, when I go somewhere, you're just walking, you're with us. We shower, it's dressed, and you're phone, and you're phone, and you're phone, and but yeah. Yeah. With those TikToks where they're hiding their. Yeah. Own. Crazy. It's actually crazy because people in your age group nowadays are obsessed with TikTok. Like, I'm sure you see the corner of where that person is recording me. Mm. That's insane, guys. You're just at school and somebody's randomly recording you. Yeah. Yo, but you get yo. used to it. You get used you to actually it. You actually get used to it, yeah. Oof. At this point, you can even pop a smile. Ne? It's like, get <laughs> <laughs> Um, we, We're nearing the end of our conversation. Uh, would you have your life any different to how it is? Um, I guess Siri. <laughs> No. No, ne? No. I think it was a great experience and I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't want to change it. You wouldn't want to I change wouldn't it. want to change it. Yeah. You, like I feel like 
everything I've went through is for a reason and there's a purpose in everything. So I feel like it has made me a better person. I've grown and I've seen the world in a different way. Whereas, yeah, I just wouldn't change it. You won't say you, you regret growing up on camera? No. Ne? No, I think... I think it's a wonderful experience. True. It's a once in a lifetime. Yes. Not many people can ever say that. Exactly. So you can't so... do this false purpose. It's like, I need left. <laughs> yeah. So I just have to, it's here. There's nothing I can do about it. And I just have to embrace this. Yeah. 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 Um, <sighs> growing up on camera, you're saying you love that. Um, and you spoke about many painful things that you've gone through. Did, what's the most painful thing you've gone through in your life? I feel like it was the one where I didn't tell my own story. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like that was an important part of my life. Uh, of your identity. Yeah, of yeah. who I am. Yeah. And I think it was something that I should have been given a chance An to, opportunity. Yeah, to, to do. do. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. and I feel like also my parents were like, how? Because they were hearing it from other people. And I feel like they would have appreciated too hearing it from me. Yeah. What's the one thing you know for sure that you absolutely believe in and you like this particular thing in life I know for sure um I'd say that my parents love me oh, yeah. 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 yeah 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 that you feel loved consistently and you know that they will just always be there for you yeah not many people can say that you are blessed um you are privileged and I hope as you continue in this journey where your life in some way or another is a microscope to other people. There are people who are envious of your life. Um, there are people who will come to you and will not have the right intentions of why they want to get close to you. Um, I hope you remain grounded because you, you're very grounded. You Thank remain you. humble. You remain respectful to people. You remain um, the person who never loses their own self-worth and gets consumed by the glitz, the, the, la the, the lights, the cameras, um, because that is a lesson to many people. Uh, you watch it every day. People are famous today and gone tomorrow. Mm. Piano artists especially. Yeah. Famous today, gone tomorrow. Stars, hip-hop stars, famous today, taken by drugs tomorrow, jail tomorrow. I hope you remain, you continue to remain grounded and you remain, I, don't, I know this is a big word, you remain the example that you are to people in your age group. You might not try to be an example, but trust me, you are. Because being grounded, being humble, being kind may not be in fashion, but it creates a better world for all of us. So at Engineer Your Life, we'd like to thank you for coming to the show. And you are most welcome to come back anytime. <laughs> Whether you're releasing music or you're releasing other new ventures in your life, we are just, I am just a phone call away. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having I'll me. I'll see you guys next week on the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living, Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge, and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories, and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.